Well, thanks for the opportunity to talk today. I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm actually not selling anything, um, but um, I, uh, I do, besides my work with the foundation, uh, I also work with uh, Keith Elliston and Rick Levins on a company, a little side project called Ingentium, uh, where we've been working on knowledge graphs and um, uh, exploring what types of things you can do and what, you know, what, uh, how far, you know, can you push the technology and having a discussion uh, a couple months ago saying, you know, I wonder if what it would be to bring EHR data into a knowledge graph and what we could do with it. And so we've been toying with that idea and, and uh, exploring a little bit. And so what I thought I'd do is just share with you a little bit about what we've done, what, what it sort of looks like uh, on top of at least the knowledge graph, the way we're uh, creating these things. And, um, you know, just to, to, you know, if we have some time, uh, you know, just talk about that and, and how it might be interesting. So uh, at Ingentium, when we, we build an, a knowledge graph, we actually start with a, a scaffold uh, under, underneath the, the graphs we're gonna actually be building for the project that we work on. And there we've gone through and looked at uh, all public databases, ontologies, uh, various other uh, sources to, to try to get um, what are the, all the underlying uh, nodes and edges that we can discover uh, that, that sort of represents, you know, kind of known biology. And, and this is, you know, trying to get genes and proteins and disease and, and uh, uh, biological uh, uh, mechanisms and, you know, different, different types of information uh, that we use uh, sort of as the underpinnings uh, of our knowledge graph. Uh, and we, we go out and looked at a lot of different sources. And really, basically, what we're trying to do is discover, first of all, nodes. Uh, we're using, you know, semantic characterization from all the you know, a lot of different sort of technologies, uh, just trying to map um, the different sources that we have and identify, you know, what are the nouns? What are the, the genes and the clinical trials and the, the different concepts, you know, that are in these things uh, from which we then extract out, you know, genes and biomarkers and, you know, pathways and, and all the different bits uh, that are out there. And uh, in doing that, you know, we looked at a lot of these different sources and we actually have, you know, been able to, pull out quite a few uh, from the, these public and uh, sources. Uh, and you can see, you know, it's, it's compounds, it's medical terms, uh, symptoms, you know, side effects. And we've gotten, you know, probably about 35 different node types on the order of 34, 35 million nodes uh, in the course of doing that. And, and so we put those into a framework. Uh, the next step was to do the same thing, uh, looking at nodes in context. So where you have you know, two or more nodes in, in a particular, um, uh, it, it, it could be a database, it could be uh, uh, some textual information. Again, doing our semantic analysis, we've tried to do you know, semantic predication. What's the, what's the relationship between these nodes? And then can we define what, what a link might be or an edge you know, in a graph terms uh, between these? And so is, is it a, you know, this causes that? Uh, is it a symptom of, does it upregulate, uh, does it treat? you know, a disease or whatever. And again, we've defined, you know, edges between these nodes that we've discovered. And here we've, again, we found, you know, about 20 different edge types uh, with, with uh, over, you know, probably close to 20 million edges at this point. And it might be, you know, from my little picture here, you know, that these compounds treat these symptoms. Uh, this biological process, you know, takes place in this particular anatomy. Uh, these genes are expressed some, someplace in particular, or these compounds treat a particular symptom. And this gives us, you know, kind of a, a, a we call it our scaffold, but that's the underlying uh, uh, graph, right, that, uh, that we build on top of. Then, and, and, and in a sense, if you think about this, this, this scaffold really encodes a lot of what we know about biology, right, today. And that obviously this is changing, it's always expanding and, and, and differentiating you know, different ways, but, you know, we, we try to keep this up to date and, you know, we, we rebuild the scaffolds, you know, every couple of months uh, to keep it, you know, as, as fresh as we can. And so the, the scaffold is, is kind of the base uh, upon which we're building. Uh, and then, uh, and, and just by the way, why we build this, I mean, we, we do other things. We, we do make some knowledge bases and got knowledge bases in a number of different areas that we've done for some customers and different projects that we've worked on. This just shows you, you know, kind of the, the volumes of the, the uh, amount of information at some of these things. And one in particular I'll point out is the coronavirus. We, we did this just for, a, you know, uh, just for our own interest in, in a way. And, and from that, we built, 
actually what we call it our COVID newscast. And if you have any interest, you know, you're welcome to take a look at this. This is all free. Every day we update this. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a um, collection of all the articles and, and references that have come out. Uh, and it's in, you know, different categories you can review it and look at this. So, and you get a sense of kind of what we're doing. I, I just point this out for information. Again, it's free. It's nothing that, you know, we're, we're selling. But if you look at, you know, what a graph from an EHR record might be, right? This just shows an, an example where, you know, it, it's, it's a patient uh, that we have. It's, it's, it might be some of the conditions that they have, which are these things in blue. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's always uh, a, uh, an edge that connects, you know, two nodes on this graph, right? If we want a graph perspective. So this patient has a condition, which is COVID-19. Uh, they have a condition, which is, you know, an allergy to latex hypersensitivity. Uh, and then the other thing that's interesting is that it also may find, you know, relationships between, you know, for example, in this case, hypertension and anemia, right? So there's some association here. And all of these are always linked back to a specific reference from a particular source, right, that you can find. For example, the COVID-19, this is a mesh identifier, and, you know, you can find out, you know, more information there. Um, the other thing is that, you know, from the EHR, we're getting, you know, the, these, these, um, the direct references, the, the patient and conditions maybe, and, and some of that, but we also then are, are discovering uh, additional things. So the, the, what we're, we're doing in terms of our knowledge graph is that we've got the scaffold. On top of that, we're building the particular, you know, disease, you know, information set from the, the HR. Uh, and then, you know, again, um, from the EHR, we, we get particular information on the patient, diagnosis, symptoms, maybe what drugs they're taking. And then we build, you know, our knowledge graph, right, from that. Uh, and then we look at, you know, can we enrich that from the scaffold, right? And so there are there relationships that we know in the scaffold for the particular pieces that have come out of the, um, the, the knowledge graph representation from the EHR. And so that's what I wanted to show in this picture. You know, we, we've picked out the, the different um, uh, conditions that the patient has, but what wasn't in there was relationships like this, right? And so these are things that from the scaffold, they, in, they get pulled out of the scaffold and we enrich the, the knowledge graph as, as we go. And so that's, you know, I think that's an important concept that I'll show you in, in a minute when we actually, well, right now, I guess, when we go and actually look at this uh, in, in operation. So I'm gonna jump over to a live demo. Uh, of course, it's on the other window. Move this over. We're using Lincurious, which is a viewer, a graph database viewer, um, but the database itself is, is Neo4j. And um, there we go. Lincurious, I find easier just to use, especially during a demo. So what I've gone in, I've, I've, I've gone in and picked out this patient that was sort of in that example, right? And so for this particular patient, looking at the scaffold and, and all of the bits, you know, that we know, um, we can expand what we know about this patient. And this has uh, observations. Come on. The rule of the demo. Right, we can look at all these different aspects of this. So for example, if I'm interested in what are the diseases that this particular patient has you know, or conditions, it'll go and pull these out, right? And, and now all of these are live, right? Uh, and you know, if you click on one of these, it'll tell you the information you know, where you can find out more and also all of the edges, right? It'll tell you right, what the edge means and, and you can look at more information about it you know, as you go. Now, as we move through this, we can do, you know, different things like suppose we want to know, so what other patients maybe have, um, have this condition, right? And so do that. Now there's a lot of them. So I'm going to pare this down to only maybe the, the next five or 10, Let's see if we can get 10. And so now here's 10 other patients that have the same condition. And the other thing that's interesting is if there are other linkages in this graph already, it'll, it'll add those in, right? So now we, we know that, you know, a couple of patients not only have the have COVID-19, which our initial patient, which is down here had, but also share some of the same condition, right, that, that they do. 
uh, in terms of looking at, uh, you know, that, that might be interesting for some reason that, you know, why are they having the same, you know, same type of um, response. Uh, similarly, you know, we can pick another patient, you know, and, and you know, we can keep expanding this and, and, you know, looking at, you know, different aspects of these things. So, for example, what's, what drugs is this patient taking, right? And if, in fact, some other patients, you know, on this are taking that same drug, those linkages will come here as well. And so, as a, as a browsing tool, you know, we think this is actually, you know, an interesting way to start to walk through and you know, look for, you know, things that might be interesting in terms of the, you know, what's on the graph here. The, the thing that we're exploring now is that, you know, can we start to use some graph algorithms to start to, to look through, you know, what are the extended, you know, uh, other connections and are there, is there additional information that we might glean from this, right, as we look ahead. Uh, and these, these can be get, you know, pretty, pretty complicated. Uh, I think I'll ex expand this, uh, let me do the whole 50 in this time. And, you know, this is, this is interesting because it, it now has grouped a bit. So here are COVID-19 patients, right, who also are, were on this list. And these are ones that don't share any similarity or have any similar conditions to our initial patients. It was here somewhere. And then these are represent kind of, um, uh, groups who have, you know, will maybe share one other condition or maybe two other conditions with our initial patient that we're querying, you know, and, and again, you know, you can start to form, you know, maybe some hypotheses about why these particular, you know, patients are kind of grouping together, you know, in having that the same, you know, say here's a pre-diabetic state and an anemia, you know, whatever, why might these be, you know, coming at this, you know, and, and COVID-19 at the same time, so. Um, the, um, you know, I think that the core of what I, I wanted to show is that, you know, this is, this is, it's, it's an interesting tool. It's a lot of fun to play with in terms of looking at these things. If this was, you know, since I'm not doing research in, in this area, I don't have a lot of good questions to ask here at this point, but, you know, what strikes me, you know, that, that this might, might actually be a pretty interesting tool too, you know, as we look at, uh, what you could do with this. So. So I just want, you know, I had, in case the demo didn't work, I had put some of these together, but, you know, we were showing that, you know, some of these, you know, the patients either come together in terms of the, the different types of conditions that they share, and you can actually literally start doing, you know, some sort of clustering in terms of what, you know, what types of, uh, of these things are actually, you know, rolling together. And, Again, what we're working on now is, is getting some of these graph tools to actually automatically look at some of these relationships. And, you know, hopefully, you know, what we're, we'll start, you know, seeing is maybe some being able to estimate some, you know, some causal relationships between the different pieces. So I wanted to keep this, you know, pretty simple, um, but I wanted to make a couple of points. Uh, I think that, you know, the knowledge graph, one of the things that it does is it gives you a way to browse across, you know, complicated uh, sets of information and start to look at, you know, some concepts and, and connections that you might not have thought about or might not have realized were there. Um, Rudy, this is a does... two-minute warning. Okay. Wow. The, uh, I, have, I have two more bullets. I think I can do it. Um, the other thing that I think is, is important to realize is that on this graph, we were able to put a lot of related databases, right, and, you know, link, you know, show how they link to other pieces. So a lot of, of unusual, you know, sets of data that you'd have to go to, you know, several different databases to do a, a query across, right, and, and be able to pull this stuff together uh, in order to, to actually look at, you know, uh, uh, symptoms with, uh, with, with genes that are related with, you know, um, you know whatever. Um, being able to pull all this together in, in a single view, right, is, is something that the knowledge graph can do uniquely that a lot of other systems, you know, other, other ways of doing it, you can't do. And then the other part is that we're, we're, we really think that the graph analytics can really come out to play uh, to start to give us some, some pretty, pretty cool uh, looks at some of these things. So we, we literally did this, you know, with just a couple, you know, started this just a couple months ago. We've gotten, you know, we're pretty happy with where we are. We actually loaded the, uh, a lot of the synthetic mass data sets that everybody's using from MITRE 
Uh, and so there, there's a lot of data behind what I what I have here to you know uh, just didn't didn't show it, but uh, I think that you know again something to think about. You know this this could be something interesting for us, uh, another tool you know in the arsenal uh, as we start to look at this. I'll finish here.